This build will make Kratos into a true god of war in Ragnarok. There's no right or wrong way for Kratos to tear his way through the Norse pantheon, but some armor sets, attachments, enchantments, and runics are better than others. And if you're looking for an endgame Kratos build to make even the Berserker King and Queen Ganar quake in their boots, this is the one for you. The aim of this particular build is to focus in on hitting as many runic attacks as you can as quickly as possible, maximizing damage and minimizing cooldown to make sure you can stun lock your enemies into oblivion. This is the most OP build we were able to put together, but remember that it mostly comes down to personal preference and play style, so let us know your favorite broken Kratos builds down in the comments. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is get your hands on most of the Berserker armor set, specifically the Berserker Curus, which you can get by defeating the Berserker Grave in the Barrens region in Alfheim. It's a tough old fight, but worth it to bag a chest armor that boosts every single one of your stats, and also massively boosts Kratos' damage output for a short time after using his relic. Sure, it also makes you take more damage, but pros outweigh the cons. Then, make sure you've also taken down the Berserker Grave in Niflheim to get your hands on the Berserker Gauntlets. The wrist armor boosts every stat bar defense, which is decent already, but they also grant a small chance at triggering a soul explosion, which both deals damage and drops your cooldown on your relic, which will be very important in the bigger fights. Now, if you wish, this build works perfectly fine with the full Berserker set, but for us and for plenty of others, the best runic and cooldown waste armor is one of the earlier ones you can get in the game the Spiritual Belt. It grants decent defense, but it's the cooldown boosts we're really looking for. All your melee attacks also have a chance to trigger a drop in runic cooldowns as well, so you're constantly working to get your runic attacks back online as soon as you've emptied them into the biggest enemies. So those are your defenses locked in, let's take a look at how you're going to be hitting back with maximum vengeance. In terms of axe runics, we really struggle to look beyond Hell's Touch for your light and Breath of Tharma for your heavy. Hell's Touch for the speed, you can get it off and it's low cooldown, which means you can trigger it numerous times through tougher fights. And the sheer damage and stun output of Thammer is basically unrivaled. It's a great way to get enemies off your back and reset if it doesn't just kill them outright. For your Blades of Chaos, we'd recommend pumping your XP into Rampage of the Furies and Meteoric Slam. Both do very good damage to most enemies and cycling from the axe to your blades to your spear will maximize your stun and damage dealing. And the more cooldown you have, the faster you can throw these runics out. For your spear, the light runic attack slot we'd recommend is Thrust of a Thousand Soldiers. Using this ability will hurl Kratos into a flurry of stabs with Dropnir, which embed explosive spears into any enemies you hit with it. At its base level, Thrust of a Thousand Soldiers does normal runic and stun damage to enemies, so it's a fantastic all-round ability. For your heavy spear runic, there's no better option for us than Artillery of the Ancients. Not only does it have some of the best stats of any runic in the game, especially once you've leveled it up to tier 3, but it also improves one of the few weaknesses the spear has in combat. The spear struggles when you're surrounded, so if you can get off a quick artillery strike on a group of enemies, they get absolutely showered with spears, which embed in anything they hit. So, those are your runics. Let's work on making your weapons as efficient and deadly as they can be. For the Leviathan Axe, there are a couple of pommels that work well in this build. The Furious Maul Axe Attachment adds a boost to strength on every axe kill, meaning you can stack some serious damage up. And it's one of the earliest you can get your hands on, so it's an easy way to start getting OP early. Alternatively, you might want to go with the Nine Realms Attachment to get a boost to your runic and cooldown, which is the whole point of this build after all and be able to trigger a realm shift, slowing time down for Kratos once Glacial Permafrost is activated. Both are good, but the Grip of Nine Realms probably wins one to one. For your Blades handles, it's hard to look beyond the Luminous Recovery handle. They boost your cooldown anyway, naturally, and grant a moderate luck chance to fully recharge your runic attacks on a successful Flame Whiplash, which you should be doing quite a bit anyway. With a bit of luck and good ability management, these handles can help you deal out huge amounts of damage. And finally, for your Spear, look no further than the mighty Olympic Sorita. This one boosts your cooldown even more, along with your luck and defense a smidge, and detonating thrown spears has a decent chance at giving your strength a boost after detonation. With your weapons locked in, time for your shield. The Dauntless Shield is possibly the best shield in the game, provided you're willing to take some risks. It reduces your cooldown as well for some bonus boosts, and combined with the Rond of Purification, it's a defensive tank on your wrist. The Rond of Purification lets you pass negative status like Bifrost onto enemies using your Shield Strike, so dealing with Asgardian enemies becomes a cakewalk. Just keep in mind that the Dauntless Shield won't give you quite the defense buff of bigger shields, so if you're a bit more risk averse, the Onslaught Shield might suit you better. For Spartan Rage, Wrath probably just wins out over Fury thanks to the stun buildup and damage, but honestly, both work reasonably well. Just avoid Valor unless you intend to play incredibly defensively, and if that is the case, then this God of War build probably isn't for you. For your Relic, take the Hilt of Gram, which when you activate it gives you a burst of rage and also stuns any nearby enemies, or if you're looking to take the fight even more to your enemies, take the Hilt of Hoford. It creates a realm shift which slows down time, allowing you to get even more hits in than normal. So if you need to deal some quick damage, or you're just looking to really go ham on a fast enemy, this relic is for you. 
Again, it all comes down to personal preference. And finally, for your enchantments, take the boon that aligns with your rage choice, Wrath for us here, the Seal of Runic Storm, and the Emblem of the Nine Realms to maximize the efficiency of your Runic attacks, crank your damage in Realm Shifts, and gain the ability to pull off the OP as hell Storm of Bifrost. Beyond those, you have a few options depending on your playstyle. The Vanaheim set will boost your melee damage on any enemies affected by status, based on your luck, which should be reasonably high with this build. The Asgard set boosts your triangle attacks based on your cooldown, which again, should be through the roof. Or consider the Niflheim set that increases Kratos' melee damage when he's above 75% health based on his defense, which once again, will be decently high here. If you don't get hit often, you'll be able to deal massive damage. And that's it, all these pieces acquired, you're finally ready to tear through the Norse pantheon like the god of war you've always been. Focus on using your runics, try and trigger as many cooldown blessings as you can, and go ham on any endgame enemy you meet. Happy hunting! And if you're just picking up God of War Ragnarok, check out these videos for tips on how to farm XP and hack silver early on. Thanks for watching!